made by local ceramicists. Yeah, but you can hardly come to the governor's residence for dinner talking about sawdust and ceramic shards, though, could you? No? Well, if I went to dinner at the governor's, I'd tell him about the pewter plate we found at Gateway Plaza, commemorating the death of Nelson in 1805. All embossed around the edges and how he gloriously died in the moment of victory. Some sailors lost treasure. Bet he'd rather hear about your plans to move Cadman's cottage. Hero's valor had been tried Upon the highway before he died At length he fell to death a prey Which proved to him a happy day Hey, Mono Man, can you show me some fella that can give me some land paper? Uh, now, what's this all about, little Lubra? You show me some fella that can give me some land. I'll give you a drink instead, how about that, eh? Milba no want some of that dizzy drink. Milba wants some land. Well, I can give you some of this land. This land, the aura. Not anymore, love, but I'll tell you what. I'll give you some land if you have a bit of a drink with me. What do you say? You come with me, up another place. Plenty walk Bulger from here. You see this land and you say, Milba can live there. What do you want land for, Milba? It's all the nourishment you need in this little bottle here. England, Badalia, make Milba, Bajal, you know. Real Bajal. <laughs> Oh, okay, Melba, I get the message. Look, I'll give you some land. I'll seal the deal with a little drink, you understand? Oh, Melba, not drink some of that plenty firewood. Just a sip. No. Oh, all right, Melba, keep your hair on. I'm just having a little drink to celebrate me winnings over me little treadmill wager. Of course, my man had to die so as I'd win the bet, but I've got me lovely little dumps and me lovely little bottles to help me through the grief. Noble love. Rumour that one out of every two adult males in Sydney was addicted to tobacco. In 1832, the Sydney Gazette stated that eight or nine out of every ten labouring men used tobacco. In 1828, there were seven pipe makers working in Sydney. Boy, I reckon I can get you some of those 53 pipe fragments up on the wall there, with at least three made in Sydney. What do you mean, get me? <laughs> Again, a man like you doesn't want just fragments, does he, sir? I also know the Essex has just hit the heads with 50 new pipes and some very superior full-flavoured red wine. I reckon I've got the backache for every one of the bricks in this house. Governor Macquarie is expecting Miss Diamond this evening. Yes, madam, right to be free. Have the other guests arrived yet? Yes, madam. And they are? Mr. Redfer and the surgeon, madam. Transported for life for enticement of the Nor mutiny. Who else? Mr. Wentworth, Surgeon General and Principal Magistrate. Formerly of note as a highwayman on Finchley Common. Mr. Bland, Surgeon. Convicted of murder last year in the East Indies. Mr. Crosley, Mr. Tartiris, Mr. Eager and Mr. Robinson. All of the Supreme Court. All former convicts. And the Inspector of Convicts, Mr. Hutchinson. Also a convict. Of what do they converse? Of wool, madam. Ah, oh, yes, wool. Always wool. And not a pure merino among them. Will he come through now, madam? Have you new settings? Yes. Two new stuffed condola chairs with covers. From London? Yes, madam. And a Spanish mahogany sarcophagus. From London? From Spain, I suppose, madam. The mahogany was from Spain. The sarcophagus was made in London, wasn't it? Well, I haven't quite worked out which one is the sarcophagus, madam. Oh, never mind. Help me through the world. What's that you're saying then? I said, help me through the world. And as if I haven't got enough to do, helping myself and all the government house through the world. Would you like to join me there and help me through the world? And who'd you be to be asking me so bold? President of the Wonderland Hand Society or such like? It's the name of my favorite public house, lass. I think I know you from there, don't I? That you do not. I don't even know what it is. It's up on Bridge Street. That's where we've torn down the orphanage and the convict lumber yards. I've not been up that far. Oh, you want to get up and take a look? There's a linguist and an engraver there now. Professor of pianoforte, a shoemaker. There's even a dancing instructor so I can take a currency bell like you for a twirl. Get away with your dancing instructress, man. You're all piddling wind like the barber's cat. Oh, you wouldn't say that if you'd heard of me exploits in sealing and coal and... Exporting wool and collecting Fijian sandalwood. And where would I have heard of the exploits of the likes of you? 
Captain Shiller, see, at the public house when I've told tales of fishing the reefs of New Caledonia, trading rum and salt and plates for China. I have not heard such tales, marvelous as they do now sound. Then where have I seen you before? I'm sure I don't know. I've been at the government house since that day I was born, and me ma before me. That'd be it, government house. I visited there when your colonial architect Lewis declared it unfit in 1845. We're tearing it down. Tearing it down, is it? Aye. I'll save you some of the bricks if you let me have that thing, wouldn't I? Well, since you put it so sweetly, I don't mind if I do. No, I got Garam will fish later. But you can have this big fish and save yourself the trouble of catching one. And I take my boar home. I teach him to swim. You will teach your baby to swim in the water? Well, he's not likely to be swimming in the sand, that's for sure. No, of course not. He's a bug of wet, but I got Woodgeen in the sand. You mean the burial place of a dead Aborigine? No, mister. It is a native whose head has been cut off and his body put in our yard. Oh. What's your name? Fanula. Fanula, I'm Mr. Yap Howitz. I'm here to do some business. Everything will be all right. Everything will not be all right, Mr. Howitz. This found like that will very likely lead to an attack on the house. And since Governor Bly is gone, there's nobody to help. Where is this man? He's out by the fir trees. They've shot him in the leg to bring him down, it looks like. Then they've hacked off his head. Well, he was still alive, most likely. Why do you have to say that? Because it's true. Well, it's probably true. I've seen such things and heard of things like to make my hair curl. There's no mercy in this place. They cut off those heads and take him back to sodding. There's no need to dwell on the grotesque, girl. I've just been out there and seen it. I've just seen it. You try seeing a poor bugger lying in his own blood and keep calm. You try living in this merciless place and keep calm. You, go out to the back and see it and keep calm. Why don't we call the police? You mean an officer? Yes. Dear God, somebody help me. Is there a telephone somewhere? encouraging you to apply. I know. Why well, can you say I don't want you to try? I don't know. I just know that you don't think it's worth it somehow. You'll think I can't ever have what they've got, and that only makes me want it more. I never said you can't be respectable. But you think it. I know you think it, don't you? I think you could learn to carry a silk umbrella to church. I think you could learn to serve respectable roast beef or respectable claret. Discard last winter's dresses. I think you could lose your terribly unrespectable youth to them. I think you could learn to walk past some poor wretch on the street. That's what you despise me for. It's not respectable to talk about perfect if you love. It's not respectable to have a tan from the sun or eat peaches picked straight from the tree by your own hand. It is not respectable. Be an inventor, a poet, or ride a cream-coloured horse. So what do you expect me to do? Stay down all my life? I expect you to apply for the job, Fanula. I will. I will just despite you. I hope you will. And I hope you buy me nice, respectable bird steel spectacles and a fat gold watch for me. Oh, what rats under the floorboard? So places full of rats, and some of them are wearing officers' hats. <laughs> what will you do with that core when you're finished? You should have spoken up if you'd wanted some. Will you throw it out the front door? I might throw it down the well, or put it in the privy since you're watching after it. And what about other scraps? Shove them under the floorboards. There is evidence of rats at most 19th century houses. The stench must have been hideous, but they had no idea of hygiene. Of course. Would you like a biscuit instead of a bite of me fruit? I don't think so. Why not? Nice sea biscuit from the government bakery. You can smell them cooking from here. Are they the ones that they used to have with uh, salted pork and leaded rum that would cut your gums and uh, give sailors stomach ache for days? Maybe they might be a bit rough. I forgot you young ones had no idea of hardship. Of course. How about a nice piece of bread? More chef and bran than flour, of course, and the convicts call them scrubbing brushes, but you might like them. 
I hear they keep your insides very hygienic. <laughs> well, apart from the food, you all had a fair standard of living from what we can tell. Did we now? And how came you to this pearl? Well, we didn't find any pearls, but we did find an Egyptian figurine dating to the 4th century AD. And a Chinese statue of Guan Yin from the 14th century, Goddess of Mercy. I don't remember there were too many goddesses of mercy. But we found all manner of European comforts, Fanula. Snuff bottles, uh, decanters, thimbles, bodkins, marbles. Of course, the governors lived high on the hog. But we found this sort of stuff in the home of Jane and William Chandler, both ex-convicts. And we dug up coins from Holland, Mauritius, France, Portugal, Spain and Arabia. Tobacco pipes from Gouda, Glasgow and Edinburgh. Perfume from Paris. A little bottle from Paris.